We've developed a new geospatial interface here on our Insight to Impact data portal. This interface makes it easier to understand the financial market landscape of each region and country so financial service providers and policymakers can make better informed decisions. You can overlay various types of data on our map to provide rich analysis. You can also upload and manage your own geospatial data on the interface on the portal. This provides a great resource for financial service providers and policymakers to monitor and evaluate in real time the shifts of financial access points. So, let's look at the ways you can use this new interface on the portal. Let's say you're a financial service provider that needs to make some strategic decisions and effectively manage resources. How can you draw out some insights that meet your needs? Start with a country, like Kenya. You see the data captured in 2015 with a population of 45 million. You choose a sector like commercial banks and ATMs. And you see all the color-coded locations appear on the map. What if you wanted to know the population density in a specific area? You go back a step. You first select additional layers and then select population. An overlay appears on the map showing the population density. If the overlay is a little dark, you simply change the level of transparency on the map key. There you go. Perfect. What if a populated area doesn't have any access points? Let's verify this by going back a step and selecting bank agents, for example. You bring the layer to the forefront over here. Hmm, still no financial access points in that area. Let's check whether there are roads or electrical grids in the area. Simply go back, select additional layers and activate roads and electricity. All right, so there's a main electrical grid here, but no roads. What if you wanted to know the population number for this specific area? You go to the analysis tab and select area of interest and draw a shape around the area like this. You then select Analysis Report and see the population is 2,789, all of whom are unserved. Let's compare this to a neighboring area, Mlungo. Same as before. It's a larger population of 14,369 with a high number of bank agents. You can use this data to find opportunities through layering to make better informed decisions based on whatever the geospatial data reveals about the landscape. Say you're a regulator who wants to use geospatial data for decision making and monitoring and evaluation. Let's use Nigeria as the country. The data was captured in 2015 with a population of 185 million. You begin by adding additional layers and you select urban, built up areas. The areas highlighted in pink are the urban built up areas throughout Nigeria. You can check it against the urban areas layer. As a regulator, you may want to see people's access to financial services in relation to urban areas, so you select Accessibility to Cities. The areas in red show signs of difficulty accessing financial services in urban areas, where it could take up to 12 hours to access the services. Now, see whether there are any financial access points in these areas. You return to sectors and select finance and you activate commercial banks. The location data appears throughout the map. 
When you view the footprint, it seems these rural areas aren't served. You can toggle the satellite view to better see what the terrain is like, whether if it's mountainous, a national park and so on. What if you wanted to know the minimum distance that a person needs to travel to access a commercial bank? You could make use of the commercial bank layer, select visualizations and select Voronoid. Voronoids are the partitioning of a plane into regions based on distance to access points. Looking at the map, the darker areas have fewer commercial banks with a higher traveling distance to access them. Simply change the terrain back to a light and basic map for ease of viewing. It looks like this whole area is rural, with only a handful of commercial banks in Maiduguri. You can bring in a population layer to confirm this. Indeed, a very small population. So, for this area you have found, there are 1 million people and only 21 commercial banks. 89% of the area is rural and the minimum traveling distance to a bank is 120 kilometers. You can also use the smart search with predefined locations through Google Maps to find nearby financial services and you can add a time allocation to that point. To view a region of jurisdiction as a whole, you can access this drop-down list which shows all the jurisdictions that can be grouped. And finally, you can create and view the country report which takes all the location data and brings it into a dashboard view that can be shared with others. How can you use the geospatial interface to better understand the insurable risks in a country? You could start by picking a country, Lesotho for example. When its data was collected in 2016, it had a population of 2 million. One of Lesotho's biggest risks is erosion, with 31% of its population relying on farming. To view the erosion risk in Lesotho, you go to Additional Data and select Erosion Risk. You can see how much Lesotho is affected by erosion as compared to other countries in Africa. With the population layer, you can see where people are living or farming. You can see the highly populated areas and where the high erosion areas are. You can also toggle layers on and off. Now let's bring in insurance companies. Return to sectors and scroll down to insurance companies. You can see insurance companies in all major towns, 31 in total. Insurance companies can add additional data to a map and they can focus on specific problem areas at their branches.